Welcome back to another episode of Practical Nutrition. I'm Sarah. I'm Cassie. And I'm Alex. And today we are talking about all things ingredients. We'll kind of talk about ingredient labels, quality of ingredients, you know, things that people probably don't really think about when you think about your health. Oftentimes, you know, people are like, what are my calories? What are my portions? My macros? Maybe you think about fruits and vegetables. If you do, good job. (laughs) We credit you for that. Um, But do you ever really think about the quality of ingredients that you're eating, you know, in the foods that you are consuming? Um, You know, there's things that we'll talk about related to ingredient labels with diet foods, quote unquote. Um, Does the quality of ingredients matter? So um, to start off, we're going to start with some research, of course. (laughs) So there was a study published in the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and they investigated the relationship between the use of ingredient labels and dietary intake in 1,817 young adults. So what they found was that 31.4% of those almost 2,000 young adults, they did use ingredient labels frequently. Um, And then the use of ingredient labels was significantly higher for women, higher education and income, those who prepared food regularly, those who were physically active, those whose weight status was classified as overweight, so that would be on the BMI scale, and then those who were trying to lose, gain, or maintain weight. And of the participants that used ingredient labels, they consumed significantly more fruit, vegetables, whole grains, and fewer sugar-sweetened beverages, which is what we like to hear. (laughs) And additionally, those who used ingredient labels ate significantly more frequently at sit-down restaurants, but less frequently at fast food restaurants compared to non-users. Typically, not all the time, but typically you can find higher quality meals, maybe more health conscious meals at sit down restaurants rather than fast food restaurants. And so they concluded that ingredient label use was associated with markers of a better diet quality. As dietitians, we want to see you have good diet quality. So what this research study is showing that people who were concerned about the types of ingredients and the foods that they were eating typically ate an overall better diet. Um, so interesting. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Let's kind of talk yeah. about what an ingredient label is, where you can find them, um, and Alex is going to dig into that for us. Yes. So most food products must include an ingredient label, and hence the word most. So if you didn't know, some foods actually don't have to include an ingredient label. A little fun fact there. Raw fruits and veggies are those that are wholesome. They don't have to include an ingredient label. So we tell our clients to make half your plate fruits and veggies whenever you can because we want to shoot for foods that are whole. And fruits and veggies don't have to have an ingredient label. They are what they are. They're from the earth. So we want to focus on those types of foods. So that's a bonus of having those fruits and veggies. Um, Certain egg cartons don't have to have ingredient labels. Dietary supplements, which on the other side of it, that's kind of scary. They don't have to have an ingredient label, so we don't really know what's going into them. Foods that contain an insignificant amount of nutrients don't have to have a food label. So like coffee beans, tea leaves, spices, flavor extracts, food colors, they don't have to list the ingredients because there's not enough of them to really list it. Packaged single ingredient meat products that are FDA regulated, so like deer, bison, rabbit, quail, wild turkey, ostrich. I've never had ostrich. Me either. (laughs) I don't know (laughs) that for a while, but that's interesting. Um, And then along with some others that aren't as common in grocery store settings. So those are ones that don't have to list the ingredients. Um, If they do list the ingredients, they will be listed in descending order by the weight. So the ingredient that's used in the largest amount will be listed first and then descends from there. An interesting thing that the food world does too, um, and I know y'all have probably used this to educate your clients too, is some products have a lot of sugar in them, right? And so the food industry has gotten really tricky and sneaky in how they list that in the ingredients because they know that consumers are becoming a little smarter (laughs) when it comes to looking at nutrition facts label, which is good. Um, So they'll use multiple types of sugar. So because they're listed in descending order by the weight, if sugar was in, if they only use sugar to sweeten um, the food, then that would have to be listed first if it was in the largest quantity. Um, however they don't want it to be listed first because that doesn't look great right and so they'll use different types like 
brown rice syrup, which sounds healthy, right? Or, but it's still sugar or molasses or high fructose corn syrup. All of those things contain sugar. So think about that. If, you, if you're ever curious like we are, <laughs> you read ingredient <laughs> labels in your free time, go investigate that. It's kind of interesting. But um, yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of how ingredient labels work. If you didn't know, now you know. Um, and we have talked about this in previous podcasts too, so we won't go into as much detail. So but Cassie, kind of tell us a little bit about what we should and look for and what we should be more cautious of. Yes, and what we should look for are whole real foods, which we say that we probably should count how many times I know, we say gosh. that. But whole real foods. And real foods means, um, you know, to me that it's just something that you you should be eating that's grown. And I've heard this and this is kind of a mean way to say it, but it either grows or has a mom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard that. I, that I is know, hilarious. But that's right. Someone said that one time. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. If, oh my if gosh. It, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. So anyway, sorry. That's a, not a pleasant thought for the day. Um, but okay, moving on. <laughs> so um, whole real foods. And um, with a whole food, that gets confusing as well, just because the food industry, again, knows that people are looking for this type of word, whole. And whole is a protected word as far as 100% whole grain. That needs to be 100% whole grain. But they can say made with whole grains, and that's a lot more confusing. So um, if you look at the label and you look at the actual ingredients, that's the best way to tell if it really is whole grains or if it's a mix of you know a teaspoon of whole grains with mostly refined grains and so because again the food industry is just very tricky so they want you to um, think that it's as healthy as possible with it tasting like it's not healthy Mm -hmm. and so they're trying to play these little games so just go in kind of like a detective when you're looking at the label and really flip it over and look at it Um, ingredients you can pronounce that's a general rule again there could be a healthy ingredient that you couldn't pronounce but in general if it's something that looks like it's from a lab or from science class then uh, maybe it's not something that you need to be eating Um, and less is usually better now if there is a uh, sauce or something that you buy and it has 100% whole food real food and it has 20 different things in it that's different than having 20 different things that are refined and not really healthy ingredients so typically things that have less in their ingredient list are going to be healthier Um, so things to be cautious of and we've gone over these in previous podcasts I'll just list these additives preservatives artificial sweeteners natural flavors um, and then a long list of ingredients and um, I actually this weekend funny story from my family um, (laughs) my my 13 year old um, when she wants to go to the grocery store and not have someone look at the label she asked my husband to take her (laughs) I I have figured this out that's funny (laughs) so smart I was was laughing because I was like oh she wants to spend some quality time with her dad you know (laughs) and then she comes back with all this stuff I would have never <laughs> let her buy that's and I hilarious. was like you know asked my I'm like did you look at the ingredients in this he's like no you know <laughs> anyway so that's smart up, but yes <laughs> those kids are tricky they are, they are. <laughs> that's hilarious uh, so let's go into diet foods I like this because you know and I spend a lot of times one educating myself and educating my clients on what really is healthy because lower calories should be healthier right because it should help you lose weight well not necessarily and the things that are higher calorie practice portion control um, and that's a whole nother topic in and of itself but what we're gonna do now is we've picked out some product comparisons and we're gonna literally list the ingredients to you quickly. We're not gonna be super boring, but we just wanna give it a sort of dramatic effect just so you can kind of you know, get an idea of what really is in some of the foods that you may be eating. So um, first and foremost, we're gonna look at some granola bars. So my diet food is the 100 calorie special K bar. I think it's the blueberry f- flavor. And for one of their pouches, there's 100 calories, 20 grams of carbs, two grams of fat, less than a gram of protein, seven grams of sugar, added sugar, and then 80 milligrams of sodium. So here's the ingredients. Enriched flour, which is made from wheat flour and then some other um, minerals and vitamins that are added, that's mandated, they, that's what they do. Um, they enrich uh, grain products. Um, and so they also have sugar, vegetable oil, so, which is made of soybean, palm and or kernel, vegetable glycerin, maltodextrin, fructose, dextrose, 
contains 2% or less of modified food starch, apple powder, blueberry puree, concentrate, corn starch, non-fat milk, invert sugar, leavening made from baking soda, sodium acid pyrophosphate, monocalcium phosphate, sodium citrate, soy lecithin, reduced mineral whey, salt, natural flavors, cellulose gel, fruit juice for color, vegetable juice for color, citric acid, malic acid, cellulose gum, mono and diglycerides, tricalcium phosphate, sodium alginate, rosemary extract for freshness. Now I will say I could pronounce all of those because I practice some of <laughs> some of those kind of like what Cassie said. You can't pronounce them and a lot of them do kind of sound like they were made in a lab, right? Um, and so that has 33 ingredients. So my comparison, which would be a more healthful option, is a lar bar. Um, and I just picked the lemon flavor. I have one of those in my office right now. So per bar, there's 200 calories, 24 grams of carbs, 10 fat, four protein, zero grams of added sugar, and five milligrams of sodium. So their ingredients are dates, cashews, almonds, lemon juice concentrate, dried lemon juice concentrate, and lemon oil. So that's six Ooh. ingredients. I like that one a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, and it does have more calories. It has double the calories, but most of the time at a snack, you know, we would probably recommend a little bit more than 100 calories having some protein, which this, um, this Lara bar does have some protein in it. You could add some nuts on the side or whatever. Um, your snacks are meant to hold you over for your next meal, fill you up, not just give you refined grains and, and sugar and things like that, which is what we see more so with the special K bar. So just something to think about. Alex, you're up next. Tell me about pancake syrup. Yes, pancake syrup. So we've got Walden Farms pancake syrup, and it is zero calories, zero grams fat, zero grams carbs, zero grams protein, zero grams sugar, 95 milligrams of sodium. So is it even like is it a substance? Yeah, you can I'm eat confused. as much as you want. Yeah, <laughs> yes, that doesn't even count. Yes, and we talk about these like fads and buzzwords and all this stuff. And I've not seen the products, but I guarantee it says zero calories and zero sugar. And people are like, let's do this. All the maple syrup. <laughs> yep. However, the ingredients: the first is triple triple filter purified water. And then maple flavor, which I parentheses put ew, because what is maple flavor? I don't know. Um, we should research that. We, we should probably don't want to know where maple flavor. What comes is maple from. flavor? I'm yeah. um, natural flavors: sea salt, cellulose gum, sucralose, which again is an artificial sweetener, lactic acid, sodium benzoate. Um, so that's to preserve freshness. So again, that's a maple syrup. And the second flavor is maple flavor. So there's actually no pure maple syrup in it. Yeah. Um, so that's just something to think about when you're at the store. Are we picking the thing that says zero calories and using a ton of it? Or are we gonna pick something a little more wholesome, which is the next product I have, and maybe using a little less of it? And the next one I have is a great value pure maple syrup, which you could probably get at most places. Um, and it's for a fourth cup is 210 calories. 53 grams of carbs, zero grams fat, zero grams protein, 51 grams of sugar, and zero grams of sodium, milligrams of sodium. And the ingredients, only one is maple syrup. So people are gonna shy away from that because, oh my gosh, it has 51 grams of sugar, but the only ingredient is maple syrup. So as dietitians, we'd help you navigate, well, how much is a serving and how can we fit it in to a healthy eating plan? Um, because people, again, will shy away from it just because of the sugar. but one ingredient maple syrup compared to the eight in the Walden Farms pancake syrup. Yeah. And those things are easily accessible. And I know, speaking of, you haven't seen the Walden Farms, they have like a big um, area in like the health market section. They have salad dressings. They have like the marshmallow topping. Mm -hmm. They have so many different things that are all zero calories, but they don't taste very good. <laughs> <laughs> the pure maple syrup tastes really good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cassie, tell us about some milk. Yes, we'll talk about Friendly Farms Original Almond Milk as our um, one of our options. And the nutrition per cup is 30 calories, 2 grams of carbs, 1 gram of protein, 3 grams of fat, less than 1 gram of sugar, and 180 milligrams of sodium. So for people just looking at that part of the label, that sounds pretty good, you know. So, um, and that's the same thing with the pancake syrup. So if you're looking just at macros, then sometimes that can be very misleading. So, and we actually, as dietitians, promote looking at the ingredients first. <laughs> so before even macros. And yeah. so just so you can see what you're eating is that important. Um, the ingredients in that almond milk are almond milk, which is filtered 
filtered water and almonds. And I don't know if we've talked about this in a podcast. I, I feel like we have, but maybe I've just said it, but with the almond milk mm-hmm. and how few almonds and they, they, that are actually in there and they don't really disclose how many almonds they use to make a container of almond milk. So um, it's probably mostly filtered water. Mm-hmm. So with some almonds in there, um, try calcium phosphate, sea salt, gel and gum, dipotassium phosphate, xanthan gum, sunflower lecithin, vitamin A palmitate, vitamin D2, D alpha to cough for all. So a lot of those are thickeners, so they can make it thick, um, kind of like milk. So versus um, our other less ingredient choice would be Horizon Organic Whole Milk. And per cup, that's 160 calories, eight grams of fat, 13 grams of carbs, eight grams of protein, so a lot more protein, zero grams of added sugar, and 135 milligrams of sodium. The ingredients are grade A organic milk and vitamin D3, just those two. So you have 11 ingredients, versus two ingredients. And that's a really good example of them trying to make a food like another food, Mm -hmm. and they have to add a bunch of stuff to it that maybe isn't something that's gonna improve your health to make the texture and what it looks like similar to what they're trying to emulate. So you have to watch those. Yeah, Um, and like Cassie said, less is usually better, but not all of the time. And we have a podcast on milk alternatives versus just normal cow's milk where we go into yes we understand there's a use for milk alternatives and nut milks um, and we give you some good recommendations on brands and and the best types that do mirror cow's milk so keep that in mind too we're not knocking almond milk by any means (laughs) Um, and so the last thing um, that I'll go over for our diet food is there's a lot of Um, like commercial meal prep companies that advertise their food as here, replace your homemade meal prep with our food that we have for you. And the prices are similar to eating at fast food or a sit down restaurant. Um, But I think it is important to investigate the ingredients in there because they could be a better option than going to McDonald's for the sake of the ingredients and the, the, the portion sizes and the protein. But should they replace your whole real food meal prep probably not um eat fit go is one that's in town and they i one of their most popular meals i picked the ingredients out of and i was going to read it and after reading the first example i'm not going to read this because there's almost three times the amount and most of their ingredients are real foods but they have to create foods in a large for a lot of people and so they do use Um, more ready to made, non whole real food, more processed options. So there's things like citric acid, triethyl citrate, silicone dioxide, um, multiple times throughout their ingredient label because they're choosing options that aren't fresh whole real foods, um, if that makes sense. And there's 81 ingredients in this particular meal, which is a lot. Um, And it could be less if you made this option at home on your own with just rice or just with chicken and things like that. So um, something to think about, right? Could you imagine making a meal with 81 ingredients no. at home? That sounds expensive too. <laughs> no, I yeah. cannot. <laughs> I yeah. And there's, there's a lot of spices and seasonings and things, but there's just a lot of extra things that we don't need that shouldn't replace your homemade cooking. Um, so think about that too. Those things have their place. Um, all processed foods have their place, but it's, it's how often you do it and it's what else are you eating in conjunction with that so okay some other examples Um, we're not going to go over the nutrition but just what should you choose versus this because one of the best things you can do um, if you are looking at decreasing the amount of processed foods that you you are eating is compare the nutrition labels so that's what we're going to do with a couple different things and uh, Cassie is going to start us off with that yes and we'll look at yogurt and um, yo play yogurt is kind of the you know whenever I'm in my 40s and that's pretty much all there was when I first started yeah. was all yo play yogurt mm-hmm. and so now there are tons of options out there and we actually did a whole podcast I believe that was our first yeah podcast. I think it was actually. Actually. yogurt it was. Yeah. yeah so I think so so we we talked a lot about that um, so, but YoPlay yogurt has cultured, pasteurized, grade A, low-fat milk, sugar, strawberries, modified cornstarch, non-fat milk, banana puree, kosher gelatin, citric acid, natural flavor, tricalcium phosphate, pectin, colored with carmine, vitamin A, acetate, and vitamin D3. So there are some actual real fruit uh, mm-hmm. fruits in there. So that's good. That's so good. Uh, yes, yeah. that's a good thing. Um, compared to Chobani plain Greek yogurt, which just has non-fat yogurt, um, cultured, pasteurized, non-fat milk. 
that's it. So that's 14 ingredients versus one ingredient. Mm -hmm. And so you're getting more of the actual yogurt and less fillers and things like that um, in the Chobani plain. And a lot of people don't like plain, but you can always add your own things to it. Some of that yeah. pure maple syrup would be an option yes. a little bit, you know, to make it <laughs> sweet or honey and some fruit, you know, and you can actually change your taste a little bit and learn to like it mm -hmm. as well if you give it a chance. Mm -hmm. um, looking at things to put in your coffee, this is a this is one that a lot of people um, use all the time. And so, and that's another thing, Sarah mentioned this earlier. Um, if you occasionally have something processed with a lot of ingredients, that's really not going to impact your health that much. It's what you do most of the time that matters, but people tend to drink coffee coffee every day if they're coffee drinkers and so that's one thing that I really try to help clients with is making sure that your coffee is not going to be a detriment to your health because you are doing it every day probably um, so if you're putting a coffee mate French vanilla creamer in that would be water corn syrup vegetable oil and less than 2% of micell micellular casein, maltodextrin, mono and diglycerides, dipotassium phosphate, natural and artificial flavor, which is they're hiding something there, we don't know <laughs> what, um, carrageenan, sucralose, and asulfame potassium. So two artificial sweeteners in there. So really, um, you aren't getting much of anything that you probably should be eating um, from that. And so versus just a Horizon Organic half and half, it's grade A organic milk and grade A organic cream. So that's all that's in there. So you, you know, that would be a real food, more whole food ingredient um, list. And so, and again, if you wanted to do the almond milk, say you don't tolerate dairy, then you can choose almond milk, but look for the ingredients in the almond milk as well or other alternatives. So, um, so the coffee mates, 13 ingredients and the horizon half and half is two. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So next we're talking about sparkling water. There's a big, Sparkling water is like a hit right now. Yeah, Everybody is. is on sparkling water, carbonated <laughs> water. Um, so I'm looking at sparkling ice, um, which is marketed as naturally flavored sparkling water. Again, those buzzwords, naturally flavored, but we've said it enough, natural flavor, what it really is, and it can be made with all kinds of different things to get that flavor. Um, so the ingredients, carbonated water, natural flavors, um, blackberry juice concentrate, malic acid, potassium benzoate, um, sucralose, green tea extract, red 40, which is Ooh. the coloring, <laughs> um, biotin, maltodextrin, uh, B5, B12, mannitol, D3, B6. So 15 ingredients in that naturally flavored sparkling water. You think if it was naturally flavored, it wouldn't have like all right. these things. But again, we know that word now, we know to look out for it um, and just to be sure to read those ingredients. And in comparison, we have Spindrift sparkling water, which I'm seeing it a lot more. I feel like before I was having a hard time finding it, but uh, now I see it a lot more because I think it is catching some speed, which is good. Um, it only has four ingredients compared to that 15. Carbonated water, blackberry juice, fresh lemon juice, and blackberry puree. So I was able to pronounce that. I know what all of that is. There's no natural flavors. Mm -hmm. um, so we like to see that in those sparkling waters. It's hard to find sparkling waters without natural flavors. Let me yes, tell you. it is. It is very hard. And, and Spindrift yeah, tastes good, It too. does. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. So. Yeah. And it's hard, to. I think with beverages, you don't think that you necessarily, you're like, this is just water, you know, because mm -hmm. I, another example is tea. I tried to buy some tea uh, for my kids to take to volleyball tournaments, and I was so surprised to find that a tea it said brew tea and then flavored real little so I turned around to look at it and it was literally water with tea or natural or flavors artificial or natural flavors and caramel color so there was no tea even in it wow. yeah and so you have to really watch you know because mm -hmm. the label looked really good you know mm -hmm. and so people can easily get confused yeah absolutely. companies are tricky they are they just want to sell their stuff but no they know that they have a vulnerable but... customer base and I don't blame y'all and I used to be there too but that's why we do these podcasts so that you don't succumb to the marketing yes. world right um, and then the last thing which I use this example all the time is with peanut butter um, and to be honest I used to Jif peanut butter since probably I was a wee little gal and I could first eat peanut butter. Um, and there's not a whole lot of ingredients in Jif peanut butter, but
but there's extra in there, that, you know, things that we don't necessarily need and there are other options with less ingredients. So Jif peanut butter has roasted peanuts, sugar, yes it does have sugar added, molasses, fully hydrogenated vegetable oils, mono and diglycerides, and salt, whereas Smucker's natural peanut butter, the biggest transition that I had to make with using Smucker's natural peanut butter is actually having to sit there for a couple minutes and stir the oil back. <laughs> that yes. honestly deterred me for getting it for so for so long. And a lot of people. Yeah. Lot of people yeah. don't like that. Store it upside down. Upside right? down. Yep. You said that. Yep. But so um, it's you know we're it's on annoying. Workout. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you can do well, it for the sake of the ingredients, which are just peanuts and then 1% less of salt. And you can taste the difference. And um, I think someone had told me this too. They, when they bought Jif peanut butter, they would just sit there and eat it by the spoonful because it tastes really good. And not that the natural peanut butter doesn't taste as good, but it doesn't have a consistency where you can just, you know, pile a heaping spoonful, it'll fall off. <laughs> and it doesn't taste as sweet and it tastes a little more natural. You can almost see some of the ground up peanuts in there too. So um, there is a taste difference, but if you're someone who's used to those really, really sweet things, you can train your palate to get used to something a little more mild. Um, okay, so after all of that, why are we telling you this? Why does the quality of ingredients matter? And so when you're thinking about low quality ingredients or lots of extra things thrown in there that we don't necessarily need, it's typically associated with highly processed foods. And research does support that a higher intake of heavily processed foods can promote obesity and chronic disease over time if you're eating them without the inclusion of other healthful foods like fruits and vegetables. And there's, I mean, there's numerous studies that have found that in Increased consumption of highly processed foods is associated with an overall decrease in diet quality, hence the one we mentioned at the beginning of this. Um, and there, there was a, a study done in 2017 that examined the dietary intake of over 33,000 people aged two and older from the 2004 Canadian Community Health Survey. So they used those people that were in that health survey. And there was a significant positive relationship found between highly processed food intake and the amount of carbs, sugar, total fat, saturated fat, and energy density in the foods consumed. So people who ate more highly processed foods also ate more carbohydrates, more all of those things that I just listed. Um, and then there was they found that there was an inverse relationship between highly processed food consumption and the intake of protein fiber and many common micronutrients so the more processed food you ate the less of those other things that you ate um, which let's clear up the carbohydrate thing in the beginning carbohydrates are helpful the quality of car carbohydrates is what we're concerned about which we've talked about before um, there there's low quality protein sources as well too so um, and then another serve or another study in 2017 well this was a, a review actually it looked at the association between highly processed food consumption and obesity and four of of the five studies found that higher consumption of highly processed foods was associated with overweight or obesity and additional studies found that higher consumption of highly processed foods was associated with higher fasting blood glucose levels metabolic syndrome cardiovascular disease risk factors and risk of high blood pressure all things that we don't want our clients to have and a 2018 study found that a 10% increase in highly processed food consumption was associated with a greater than 10% heightened risk of breast cancer and cancer overall just interesting and kind of scary to think about. Does that mean that you're going to get it? No, but it's just something to think about too. Um, so uh, Alex, tell us again, why? Why does the quality of ingredients matter? Give us why? some more info. Why does it matter? So highly processed foods are often stripped of many nutrients. So as it's processed, it loses some of its nutrients, but even when vitamins and minerals are added back in, it may not have the same benefit. It's important to remember that nutrients act in a synergistic fashion within their original source of food. So for example, we know that when vitamin E is consumed in its whole food form, so vitamin E is in like nuts, seeds, those types of things, other nutrients and phytochemicals in these foods act in tandem to give us health benefits. When vitamin E is isolated, it is not as effective. So different ingredients within whole foods such as nuts and seeds work well with vitamin E so we can absorb it better and utilize it better. Um, but if it is added back in, then it's not used as well in our body. So typically de decreasing the intake of highly processed foods over time is usually accompanied by cooking more at home and implementing more whole food into the diet, leading to better health outcomes. Additionally, foods with high quality ingredients typically taste better. Which, which we all true. want. Yes. That's right. <laughs> I can really taste a difference between, because I will not drink black coffee. I use the half and half, the horizon half and half, just a little bit. And I can taste a huge difference when I do, I don't necessarily, you know, have done coffee mate in the past, but some of those whack 
lower calorie, sugar free options. They just don't taste that good. Mm-hmm. They taste funny oh, to yeah. me. I agree. I yeah, know, I too. agree. It ruins the coffee. I think so too. Yeah. And I've noticed that like with ice cream, like if mm-hmm. one, like I've tried some that have a bunch of sugar alcohols and my stomach's messed up for like two days yep. yeah. versus like if I do like haagen I feel a lot better yeah. when I do have ice cream. Absolutely. I love ice cream. All right, Cassie, tell us how you can ensure you're consuming foods with high-quality ingredients. So just in summary, read the ingredient label. Start there when you're looking at a food. A food label may catch your eye, but be sure to look at what you're actually eating. Compare products because there is a big difference between products. So if you take any product we've talked about, there are going to be several options that have more whole foods, less ingredients added, less sugar added, and then a similar product from another company might um, have a lot more of those processed items and also continue to check labels even from things you typically buy because Mm -hmm. companies change (laughs) what they put in there and so when clients ask me about specific products I I look you know off all the time again at products that I typically would recommend because sometimes they do change things and change formulas and a lot of that's dependent on what's popular at the time what they're you know what people are looking for and so it's kind of this game you know so you be sure to keep checking those eat plenty of whole real foods without an ingredient label so if you look at your your patterns and see that you're eating mostly packaged food then that might be something that you try to think about okay how could I incorporate more real whole food into my eating plan also choose minimally processed foods as much as possible remember that some processed foods can certainly fit into a healthful diet so it's just what you're eating most of the time that makes the biggest difference and of course ask a dietitian we are always happy to <laughs> help tell you what we think about a product or a food or give you a suggestion or uh, tell you if we think that you're you know you need to think about replacing something with something else if you're eating a lot of it or eating it all the time so uh, we love to talk about that kind of thing absolutely we do we read ingredient labels for fun that's what we pretty much did today Um, and if you do have questions just let us know about specific products or your overall diet quality and don't think that we are perfect and we don't expect you to be perfect we would encourage you to you know choose those fun foods have those processed items but don't do it all the time and incorporate all of those other healthful things that we've talked Talked about before too. Um, so that concludes our topic on ingredient labels. I hope you learned all of things today. Um, we learned a little bit more about what's in specific things and, and we like to compare those products too for our sake and for your sake. So um, we will see you next week. Bye. Thank you.